Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. Question 1 talks about algae and rocky shore ecosystem. In an investigation, a student aims to determine the relationship between the depth of rock pools and the species diversity of algae. A. State two variables that have been standardized in the investigation. This question requires the control variables mentioned in the passage. You should not suggest any new variables on your own. First, the measurements were done during low tide, as mentioned in the first sentence of the paragraph. In the same sentence, we also learned that it is done on the same day, in the exact location. According to point 1, all the sample rock pools are in the mid-shore zone. The last paragraph shows that all the rock pools were selected randomly. It is also mentioned that the deepest part of all rock pools were measured. In B, we have the scattered diagram of the results. The null hypothesis for Spearman's rank correlation always states that there is no correlation between the two variables. So, in our case, the null hypothesis is that there is no correlation between species diversity and the depth of the rock pool. 2 shows us the calculated RS value and the critical RS values for various numbers of pairs at p equals to 0.05 and 0.01. You need to discuss the conclusions that can be made from the analysis of the data collected by the student. In biostatistical tests, we usually refer to the critical probability of 0.05 unless stated otherwise. This means we want to have a 95% confidence level in our conclusion. In our case, 32 rock pools are being sampled. The critical RS value for p equals to 0.05 when there are 32 pairs of data is 0.350. The calculated RS value is 0.628. It is greater than the critical value. This means that p is smaller than 0.05. So, the null hypothesis is rejected. This indicates a significant correlation between the depth of the rock pool and the species diversity. According to the scatter diagram, there is a positive correlation between rock pool depth and species diversity, and this correlation is not due to chance, as it is statistically significant. 3. State one reason why Pearson's linear correlation coefficient is not appropriate for analyzing the data. Pearson's linear correlation coefficient evaluates the linear relationship between two continuous variables. The scatter diagram does not indicate a linear relationship, and species diversity or the number of species is not a continuous variable. Additionally, the test can only be used when the data are from a population that is normally distributed. C. Explain why it is difficult for researchers to repeat this investigation of species diversity in rock pools from the information provided. To replicate an investigation, we need to know precisely how and where it is done. The question only states that it is done on a rocky shore in North Wales, UK. We do not know the precise location of the rocky shore. The exact position of the mid-shore zone is also unknown. The question mentioned that half of the pools are small and half are large. We do not know the exact sizes of the pools. Besides, we need to know the specific location of the rock pools to replicate the investigation in the same place. Lastly, the investigation was done during low tides, the height of which is unknown. In D, you are asked to describe an investigation to find out how the distribution and abundance of the different species of algae vary on a rocky shore with no rock pools from the low watermark to the high watermark. In a design experiment question, you must describe the three variables, the necessary procedure, reliability, and safety precautions. It is best to list all the points you want to include and arrange them logically into your answer. To measure the abundance of species, a belt transect is used. Line transect is not a suitable sampling method because it cannot determine the abundance of a species. You can use a transect line and a quadrat to make a belt transect. First, Place a rope from the low watermark to the high watermark. Determine the intervals for the sampling positions, for example, every 3 meters. 
Sampling is done at regular intervals along the transect. A quadrat is placed at the predetermined interval. The same quadrat is used consistently throughout the investigation, ensuring a uniform quadrat size. This is a control variable. Identifying the species of algae within the quadrat. Stating how it is done can get you a mark. For example, by comparing the samples with photos of non-species. Some algae may be tiny. We need to pay extra attention so we do not miss those small species. Then, count and record the number of different species of algae in the quadrat. Describing a method to determine the abundance can get a mark. For example, we can calculate the percentage cover of each species. This is done by dividing the number of squares they occupy by the total number of squares inside the quadrat. You can also measure the density or frequency. To increase reliability, we need at least three replicates. We can repeat the belt transact sampling at two other positions along the shore from the low water mark to the high water mark. Calculate the mean values for each quadrat position. Lastly, we have to do a risk assessment. You must identify the hazard, state the risks, and describe the precautions taken. Those rocks at the sampling site might be slippery and sharp. Accidents can happen to cause injury. The experimenter should wear closed shoes with a good grip. There is a mark for AVP. You can describe other control variables to get this mark. Question 2 is about an investigation into how abscissic acid and salicylic acid affect the shoot growth in seedlings of rice. Figure 2.1 and 2.2 show the results. A wants you to suggest how the measurements of shoot length can be made accurately since some seedlings do not grow straight. We can pull the shoot to straighten it before measuring against the scale. We can also place a string along the shoot and mark the start and end points. Then use a ruler to measure the string. B shows the formula for standard error and 95% confidence level. The standard deviation, 5, is divided by the square root of the sample size, 9. So, the standard error is 1.67. The mean shoot length for batch D is 42 mm. 42 plus and minus 2 times 1.67 will give you the 95% confidence level. When the error bars of two values do not overlap, we can conclude that the difference between the values is significant. This is a strong indication that the difference is likely not due to chance. C wants you to suggest and explain the effects of ABA and SA on the growth of the rice seedlings over 5 days. When you compare the seedlings that received these plant hormones with batch A, where only water was given, you can see that ABA reduces shoot growth while SA causes an increase. A possible explanation is that ABA prevents cell elongation and cell division, while SA stimulates these processes. These processes are essential for growth. Treatment C shows that when the two hormones are given, the shoot length is only slightly reduced. The reduction is not as much as when ABA is used alone. This indicates that SA counteracts the effect of ABA on growth due to their opposite effects. D wants you to outline a method to test if the rice seedlings could take up ABA and SA in the roots and transport the hormones to tissues in the shoot. The first mark is mandatory. You need to describe a method of applying the solutions or hormones only to the roots. We can use a syringe to inject the hormones into the soil next to the roots. The same volume of solutions is used for each experiment. This is one of the control variables. Then, Describe the dependent variable. We should measure the shoot lengths on day 1 and day 5. The difference will show the effect of the plant hormones on shoot growth. We need to provide a specific example of a condition that is similar to the shoot spraying experiment. Maintaining those control variables allow a valid comparison. For example, you can describe how the temperature or light intensity is controlled for both investigations. Lastly, Describe a method to identify the presence of ABA and SA in the shoot will give you a mark. This is to check if they have traveled from the roots to the shoots. For example, we can cut a section of the shoot and run a chemical test to detect the presence of the hormones. 
E talks about another investigation that determines the effect of these hormones on gene expression. The expression of three genes was measured. One wants you to complete the table to show the effects. Note that you must use the words given. You will not be credited if you use other descriptions. To determine the effects, you must compare the expression of each gene when each hormone is applied versus when only water is used. When ABA was given, two of the genes show a large decrease and one showed the opposite. For SA, the difference was not big for all three of the genes. Stating that there were no changes is also acceptable for all three cases. This is especially true for CDKB2 and CYCD6 because the error bars overlap. 2 wants you to state and explain whether the evidence fully supports, partially supports, or does not support the conclusions stated. The first conclusion is fully supported. For KRP4, ABA alone increases the expression drastically. However, when SA is also present, the expression becomes very low. It is only as much as when only water is given. Conclusion 2 is only partially supported. The expression of CYCD6 is only slightly higher when we compare ABA plus SA with ABA alone. It is not as high as with water or SA alone. This indicates that SA cannot increase its expression significantly after ABA has reduced it. Besides, the values are very close. A statistical test should be used to determine if the difference between the values is significant. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.